Do you know what a Switch is? No, not the video game console, nor the thing you use to turn on the lights. In this instance, Switch refers to a key networking device. How have Switches evolved over the years? Let's find out! Imagine that two computers in the same office need to send files to each other. The most effective way to connect them is through an Ethernet cable, building the simplest local area network for the computers to communicate over. Now, increase the number of computers to six. How many Ethernet cables are needed? Six Ethernet cables simply connect each computer to a transit station, which forwards information between them. This transit station is the predecessor of a switch, a hub. This hub, however, is a simple device, providing only one transmission channel. If one computer is using the channel, other computers have no option but to wait. And if there are a lot of computers waiting to send information, well, some of them will have to wait for a long time, given the hub's inability to process requests concurrently. So, the hub is a good choice when there are just two computers sending information to each other in sequence. Beyond that, it's pretty inefficient for anything more complex. Nevertheless, it was a state-of-the-art communication device for its time. Then, in 1989, computer networking equipment manufacturer Kalpana turned a single channel hub into a switch using a switching matrix, allowing multiple computers to communicate at the same time. The first Ethernet switch was born. But communication through the switch was only possible within a LAN. It did not support communication between computers on different LANs. For that to happen, a router was required, a device that was simply unaffordable for most companies. Back then, routers were much more expensive than switches. So technicians began to think about how to solve this problem. If switches were cheap, they pondered, would it be possible to add routing functionality to them? It was. Modifying the software and hardware of a switch introduced a new routing module. Problem solved. And this is how layer three of switches were developed. From this point on, more and more functions were added to switches. Indeed, with additional security, wireless local area network access controller features, and other functions, switches became increasingly powerful. Over time, though, it became troublesome to change both hardware and software with every switch evolution. What if only software updates were required? And so, programmable switches entered the market, offering unrivaled levels of convenience. Switches have evolved so much and so far that there seems little space for future development. But that's not factoring in sheer network expansion. In the age of the Internet of Things, so many devices will need to be connected to networks. Switches risk running out of ports. But if a switch port simply connects to a remote unit, it's magically converted from one port into many. So, surrounding a switch with lots of RUs vastly increase the number of available ports. This is Huawei's simplified architecture. A mere 30 years or so have passed since the arrival of that first switch. From a single hub to Huawei's simplified architecture, what comes next?